Great. Well, welcome everyone. Good afternoon. Um, I guess good morning to some of you uh, on the West Coast. Um, my name is Denise Pavletic, and I am the Director for Systems Improvement at ASTO, um, welcoming you to our um, really our second call of the Performance Management Quality Improvement Affinity Group. And um, based on your feedback from the call that we had in March, if you were indeed on that call, um, we did hear you loud and clear um, that you really wanted this to be more of a conversational type of webinar without um, doing a lengthy presentation and then just leaving maybe 10 or 15 minutes at the end for Q&A. Um, this, this will be a facilitated discussion. Um, I have some discussion questions ready, but if you have others that you want to add, please jump in. Again, I want this to be conversational, um, so feel free to jump in at any time. Um, instead of doing a roll call, if you could, um, in, the, in the lower left corner of your computer, you should see the chat function. And if you would, and, and some of you, there might be more than one of you in the room, and I want to make sure I capture all, all of you that are attending. So just write your name and your agency in there, um, and we'll use that as roll call. I spelled my name wrong. <laughs> Did I hear someone say they spelled their name wrong? <laughs> <laughs> yes, I'm so sorry. <laughs> it's okay. As long as you spelled your own name wrong, I guess it's okay. <laughs> one of those days. Uh, well, thank you guys. Akia. So we'll continue to let you guys um, uh, uh, type in your names. And I, I know that you aren't able to see all the names, so in just a few minutes what I'll do is I will copy and paste that back into the chat function so that you all will get an idea of who's on the call as well. Um, maybe someone in particular that you really wanted to um, to pick their brain, so I want you all to be kind of know who's on the call as well. Um, also, before if you're going to speak, um, please be sure to introduce yourself, tell us your name and the agency. Um, we do have a lot of folks on the call. We had many people uh, accept the invitation, so I'm very excited um, that you all are interested in this type of a venue. Um, I do want to remind everyone that this is an optional call. And again, that was based on feedback from the March call that you can opt in or opt out of the call based on your availability uh, and or based on the topic. So um, again, that was based on your feedback. And so what we did was, um, and I'm maybe jumping ahead a little bit, what I did in, back in March was I sent out a poll to everyone to kind of have you guys prioritize the top three topics that you wanted to cover, and the, the, the one that rose to the top was around engaging leadership, and that's what we're going to be talking about today. Uh, the second one was around health equity and performance management, and then the last one, or the third one, I should say, was around advanced performance management and quality improvement. So our next call, we will be featuring the topic of health equity. Uh, just to, again, for those who haven't been, who weren't on the call in March, just wanted to do a quick review of the purpose here, that we're trying to cultivate this learning community of it's strictly state health agency professionals, and we're, we're strictly, strictly talking about topics, topics specific to performance management and quality improvement. And just so you know, this is a, a pilot affinity group that's part of the um, PHPIN network. So we, we've been working with our partners at CDC and NNPHI to pilot this affinity group. And if things go well, um, we may uh, go ahead and form other affinity groups. Uh, so it, it's important that we hear your feedback um, on this. And I will give you an opportunity to do that uh, at the end of the um, oh. Last, um, you, can, you can also use the listserv um, email address if you want to pop a question out to the group. Um, feel free to do that as well. We want you to be able to share resources, uh, et cetera. And again, I'm, I'm doing a little more talking than I would have normally liked, uh, but I did want to make sure that everyone on the call um, started with the same, had the same background information. So today uh, we are going to spend the majority of our time with, we're in a conversation 
Um, I, I'm going to do a couple of poll questions just to get an idea of um, you know, who's on the call, and I think it will be helpful as well for you folks to know who's on the call. So you see the agenda there. Um, so, so let me stop, let me pause, because I do, again, want this to be a conversation. Any um, feedback on the purpose of the group, questions about the group, um, questions that you would like me to ask um, that weren't on the list? Okay. Um, hearing none, let's jump into the poll. Um, so the first question that I have for you is just what is your role within your agency? And um, I, I did my best. I, I kind of structured this um, around the, the structure that we had at the North Carolina Division of Public Health. Um, so I may not have hit exactly all the titles, but pick the one. If you were forced to pick a, a role, um, pick the one closest to the choices that you see there. And I'll, I'll give you a few minutes to, or I'll give you a minute or so to um, let us know. So keep, keep, keep on voting. Or polling, I should say. And while you're doing that, I am, whoever has um, just Cut and or whoever. Oh, let's see, this didn't work like I wanted it to. I'm trying to share with you all the people that are on the call. Give me in one minute. Um, I'll cast it all. Okay, let's try this one more time. Well, I guess it's not working like I wanted it to. Okay. Well, I had hoped to be able to copy um, everyone's name that um, is in the chat function and, and share that with you, but it doesn't look like it is copying all the names. Uh, yeah, um, Joya, that would be great. Thank you. Joya. Joya is also on the line, and I'm sorry I didn't stop to um, to acknowledge there's other ASTO folks on the line. Um, I've got Joya Kaufman, um, we have uh, Leah Silva, Alex Barton, and Donna Marshall. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and jump to the results. Oh, I really missed, <laughs> I missed the boat on, the, on these uh, roles. So we do have a couple of folks that are in the executive senior leadership. Um, and I'm really thrilled that you all are here because I think you can really help us in, um, you know, guiding us in terms of, you know, what, what gets your attention, what grabs your attention, what keeps you engaged in this whole concept of performance management and quality improvement. So, um, so I'm, I'm thrilled that there are some leaders um, on the call. It looks like 50% of you are falling in the other category. Can, can someone just kind of call out some, some roles that I totally missed? Accreditation coordinator. Okay. Oh, I guess I was, I was I, 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 in my head I was putting that into a program director type position, but I hear you. Okay, thanks. Accreditation coordinator. Other? Performance improvement manager. Uh-huh. So I, I learned something here that program director isn't all, un all encompassing. That's a public health term. Is there, are there other roles that you would like to share? Denise, this is yep. Luz. At yes, Luz, go ahead. I'm the PIM here. You're the PIM as well, okay. Great. All right. So moving into the next poll question, if you could rate your comfort level in terms of approaching leadership around the um, topic of performance management and quality improvement, so anywhere from un completely uncomfortable to I, I meet with uh, my leadership regularly. And again, this is all anonymous, so um, I'm not calling out any names. And the, 
just so you all know, um, the reason I'm doing this poll is because I knew that there would be some, you know, there would be kind of the whole gamut of people on the on the call. Um, I was guessing that anyway, but I wanted to um, be sure that I was targeting this call for the right audience. So keep voting. And Joya, I, I'm trying to promote you, Joya, but I, I don't see you on my list. Okay, I'm going to jump to the results there. Okay, kind of what I thought. No su big surprises there. Um, we have majority of you are relatively comfortable, um, and then we go into very comfortable, and then we have several of you that do meet regularly with your leadership. So again, we're hoping that maybe um, for those that are meet regularly with the leadership that we can learn something from you in terms of how you how you get their attention, um, and, and that you know how to engage them. So thank you for that. And then um, just one last poll question: in terms of the, in terms of where your agency is in, on performance management, quality improvement, um, on this kind of the scale here that I um, developed, um, just give us give me an idea of whether you're, you have no knowledge um, at, at the one end of the scale all the way up to performance management quality improvement is fully embedded. So I'm going to give you a few minutes to do that. Or I should say a few seconds. All right, I'm going to jump to the result. Again, um, what I what I had expected. Um, there's again the whole gamut. However, the majority of you are um, at the point where there's formal PM QI going on in specific areas, but not necessarily across the agency in a systematic way. All right, now I'm going to shut up. <laughs> and switch it over to you guys. So I, I gave you some dis discussion questions to think about. We can start with this que these questions, or if someone has a really burning question that they want to ask, um, feel free to jump in. So I, had, I sent you out um, some pre-reading. Um, it was links to NicheQ. Um, any thoughts on that information. Um, I know it was really specific to quality improvement, but um, you know the concepts still apply. So, did anybody glean any great information or helpful information from that reading? Oh, we have a shy group today. I guess. <laughs> okay, let me go back. <laughs> let me go back to <laughs> we w back in March. You guys wanted to have conversation between each other. You didn't want to be talked at. So, please, please um, take advantage of this time and talk with your um, peers. Denise, this is David Harris. I'm the manager of performance management in the. Oklahoma State Department of Health. Great. And I, I liked I just like the quick succinct bullet point reminders. A lot of it was um, reminders, some of it was new information, but it was just nice to have uh, quick tips that I actually printed them off to hang just to kind of I have a lot of printouts hanging in my cubicle, strategic maps and things that visual graphics, but the a quick bullet point list that I could just hang to not only um, remind myself that when my staff are in my office to point to and say these are kind of our guiding uh, just, uh, tips to, to always be thinking and using. And, and I had to think about what my elevator speech is for uh, what is my 60 second or uh, two minute uh, speech for performance management and for my 
colleague who's our manager of quality improvement what that would look like for her as well. So I just like the I just like them for those reasons. Great. Well, David, do you can you share with us your elevator speech, or you haven't come up with it yet? <laughs> Thank you, Denise, for putting me on the spot. Uh, <laughs> I no, I, I I I think that's what I was trying to articulate. I realized I probably don't have one uh, that is formalized or that I've rehearsed. It just mm -hmm. depends on who I'm talking to and kind of what their knowledge base or understanding is. And I generally kind of make it up on the fly. I hate to say that, but depending on who I'm speaking with, but that's what I liked about the readings that you sent us. It encouraged me uh, maybe even type one up and just kind of look at it and, and have it, uh, you know, not completely memorized word for word, but type one up and have one to share with my staff and say, hey, here's our, you know, here's our elevator speech. Here's the quick high point to hit. Well, and David, I didn't mean to put you on the spot, but I think there's a lot of people in that same boat, yeah, <laughs> which I, I is why I, I, yeah. I had that in there as a discussion question. Um, so then let me put this out to the group. For those of you who do have elevator speeches, <laughs> can you share, would you mind just sharing with us what you say when you catch a senior leader, um, you know, in the elevator or pass them in the hallway? Denise, this is Dan Ward, the PIM for the State of Idaho. I do have an elevator speech, if that helps to, Love to say, hear. say the day or whatever. <laughs> um, Go ahead, Dave. Yeah. As the PIM, my job is to provide the performance management and quality improvement tools and training so staff can be more efficient and effective in their job. Wow, that's, that's mm -hmm. great. That's a, basically one sentence. Yeah, it's the... Uh, what is it, 2797 rule or whatever, I think Vermont developed it for creating the elevator speech. I've got the document of how to develop an elevator speech, and yeah. we've done it actually with the um, leadership to create one as well, and we've got that embedded in our performance management quality improvement plan description. So, Dan, w tell me that again, the 279. Oh, i got to hunt it down. Uh, Hold, please. <laughs> <laughs> I can't, is that what it is? Thank you. It's 27 words. Um, I can't remember what Three the points. Three points. Three yeah. points. And what's the nine? 27 ah, You got me. i got to find it somewhere in my um, school. So Vince Cavello um, does a lot of talk about that. And, it, and uh, Rudy Giuliani apparently used it in F, with 9-11. It's like you can't. This is Lisette, by the way, in Texas. Oh, you thank can't, you. <laughs> you thank can't. Uh, it's like the the number of topics you can remember, and the and that after 27 words, people and obviously I'm rambling more than 27 words, but the people mm -hmm. shut down after that. I'll, I'll look, see if I can find something too. Well, and 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 that's the part. we want you to ramble today. <laughs> this is the time we can rehearse. That's easy. <laughs> mm -hmm. So yeah, this is Joanne from Connecticut. Great. Hi, Joanne. Hi. So we came up, it's not the same as the ones we've heard, but when we did our cultural assessment, we came up with a vision for what we mean by performance management, and then we boiled it down to our elevator speech, which is striving for excellence daily in everything we do. And, and we just wanted to have that so that staff would, it was more for staff, what do we mean by managing performance? So that's what we came up with. Well, that's great. So that's a different sort of a different audience um, using an elevator speech. So, Ann, do you guys have something um, for the senior leadership? No, I mean it, for us, it's what we all are doing every day is trying to do the best job that we can, and I think that's what we are trying to say is that it's all of us, all every day, trying to do the best work that we can. Great. Thank you. So can, a quick question. I want to go back to this 2793. Is that something, if you Google that, you, you'll, be able to, you'll be able to find out, find what that is? This will set. You absolutely will. I just yeah. found it. Um, it came up the first. Uh, it's risk communication, and it is keys to communication, anticipate, prepare, and practice. Vince Cavello. Um, he's the director of the Center for Risk Communication, and the 2793 translates into 27 reading, 27 words, nine seconds, and three messages. Okay. 
Okay. That's excellent. Thank you for finding that. Yep. Yeah, it's definitely more of a media um, tool for advocacy, planning, execution, and evaluation. So there's some worksheets and things available out there to utilize this. And who, I'm sorry, who is, who is just speaking? Oh, this is Antonia in Massachusetts. Okay, great. Thanks, Ann. Antonia. Um, oh, and, and Tanya, I'm sorry. Yeah. yeah, the 27 words I know I used in my former life working with um, community health centers and developing the elevator speeches, it was really important for them to be very succinct, and so 27 words definitely worked really well. Yeah, this is Dan. I just found mine. This was presented by Jack Moran from the Public Health Foundation when he came out uh, back in 2013, I think it was. Mine references Vermont lawmakers created by them. I don't know who the source is, but 27 words, 9 seconds, 3 points. Yep. So for those of you who maybe have a little bit of a longer elevator speech, like maybe you have a slow elevator <laughs> and it might take 30 seconds to, to get up from floor to floor or whatever, um, does anybody have something that might be a little bit longer that they'd like to share? Would that then be an escalator speech instead of an elevator if it takes longer? <laughs> it could be an escalator I'm, I'm just saying. <laughs> I like it. I, I, I love it. I'm going to call it the escalator speech. <laughs> well, so, um, so while we're talking about these, the elevator and escalator speeches, um, what has been the reaction to the person to whom you were speaking and was it was it something? Could it did it open a door for them to for you to say, hey, I would really like to you know get on your calendar for 20 minutes and talk to you about what's going on in the organization? Has anyone had any good luck with with that? Um, this is Dan again from uh, Idaho. I use it basically every time I uh, give my uh, in-service trainings on quality improvement or performance management. It's kind of a way of letting people know, hey, I'm available in whatever capacity, whether you want to do it one-on-one, -on -one, you have a small group, a program, a bureau, or whatever, um, it's to let them know, you know. And then if there's times when I'm out at the districts or whatever, to let them know I'm also available, as well as the tribes. Great. Well, you, you, you use that more as a, sort of an all-encompassing um, communication tool. Correct. It's just like an elevator speech is meant to, is to start off, just to give them a little tidbit of information, a basis to kind of like, oh, so this is what this is about. This is what you do. I've got a couple questions now, mm -hmm. and then we can peel the layers, and you know, and field it as it comes. Great. Thanks. Thanks, Dan. Um, so let me switch to. There was a couple of folks in the audience who were part of the senior leadership. Um, hopefully you, you're still on the call with us, but would you mind sharing um, some things that would be helpful for this group to know from your perspective uh, what, would, what would kind of pique your interest around this topic? Did I lose my executive leaders? This is Lisette, and I'm not an executive leader, but I'd also be interested to hear what is a turnoff. What what shuts down the um, what shuts down the communication? Uh, great question. How about here is what I need you to do? <laughs> I know that's kind of with a little bit of humor, but um, I find myself sometimes if I approach direct too direct with, you know, oh, here he comes again. He's got more stuff for me to do. Does that kind of make sense? And so sometimes I approach as kind of like, could I get some advice and direction and things like that? And then sometimes the leadership will actually volunteer and say, you know, that is my area, or here's what we can do. I don't know if that helps or not, but I'd like to hear from leadership if that is true or not. I'm Catherine Sapp from Missouri, and I'm a bureau chief over about 300-ish um, staff. 
um, and who provide adult protective services in Missouri. And we have an existing quality assurance um, program that we're, we're utilizing a lot of opportunities to discuss you know, ways to improve how we deliver services, but also how we um, work in our, uh, our offices and amongst one another. And um, one thing that I feel that really either um, will make a, an idea flop uh, <clears throat> is when there isn't a rationale explained and you know, what's in it for me kind of thing. Um, it's, uh, they have to have the understanding of why it's important to me to hear frontline staff um, feelings on how things are going. Uh, I don't want them to feel that uh, upper management is not at all listening. And so um, the whole rationale on why did we even get into considering quality, um, continuous quality improvement process was really um, kind of a grassroots type of effort on we need to, we really do need to have that opportunity of a forum um, to allow those staff on all levels to have conversations on improving our work. Um, not the work, not just the work that we do <coughs> for others, but also the work we do within our offices. I don't know if that helps. No, Catherine, Catherine, this is Dan. Catherine, that is really, really helpful because that's something that I've been approaching differently is making sure it's what's in it for me kind of approach, how they benefit. So thank you. Yes, indeed. Um, any other leaders that want, would like to share, whether it's something that shuts you down or turns you on? Let me ask the group this. So um, what is it specifically around engaging leadership? I think this was one of my discussion questions. So um, is it that they, is, is it the leadership doesn't understand what PMQI is, or they, they don't know what they can do to support it, or bo is it both maybe, or is it something else? I think it's both. This is Megan in Washington. I think um, participating in a quality improvement project of any duration or size is time consuming and it hasn't, uh, it's not part of the experience of a lot of leaders, whether they're mid-level mid leaders or executives. And I also don't think that we, um, we have resources um, at their level to help them understand um, what their role uh, their best roles are in in um, making a successful culture like that. So the um, in the eight steps or eight point um, tips piece that we were talking about earlier, um, use evidence and experts to make your case and use other voices to build engagement. So it's the number four and number five in that list. Mm -hmm. um, that's actually a very challenging thing to do. Um, it, it, that in, in so I look at that and I'm like, okay, um, I need funding to bring in people like that so that my executives uh, and, and mid-level managers can learn from somebody who's not me. Uh, so it's easy, easy, definitely easier said than done when you, yes. yeah. Any tips for, for Megan? Or are you all struggling with that same, I, I would imagine you probably all are struggling with something similar. This is Rachel Melody from Michigan. And, hi, um, hi. I think that when we talk to our leadership, they do understand that there's value in quality improvement and performance management. Um, it's just that competing priorities get in the way. And um, when you're dealing with another crisis, quality improvement and performance management become more of the um, nice to do, it seems like, to leadership. Mm -hmm. So if anyone else is dealing with that and has figured out a way or around that, <laughs> I'd be interested in learning about that. 
Great question, um, Rachel. Anybody have any anything to share? I know these aren't easy easy questions. So, um, and and I think that we're I guess we're all here to kind of learn together. Is there a way to? I know there's always fires, but you know, performance management, quality improvement. Those are. I mean, those are designed to, for us to be more, you know, more in a, re, in a proactive mode versus a reactive mode. I mean, obviously, there's going to always be something to react to in our business, but um, does anybody have any thoughts around, you know, using that argument um, that, it, that it's really, it prepares us to perform better and then give specific examples? Hi, uh, this is Isaac in New York, and um, I just wanted to say that you know we've done a lot of, I think, great work in trying to build up our quality improvement capacity with trainings and all kinds of other things, um, and we've had some really interesting projects. But we're sort of in the process now of pivoting toward um, directing a lot more of our focus and attention toward developing the performance management side. We have some performance tracking um, systems in place in the department, but we want to make those um, more developed, uh, we want to have more bi-directional value exchange um, from the data that, that we collect and then report back. And what we're hoping is that um, with a really great performance management system in place, quality improvement will sort of develop a little bit more organically moving forward than, you know, we've had to really work to get <coughs> these quality improvement projects so far off the ground. Um, but if you can provide people, uh, particularly managers, I'm guessing, with reports uh, about how their various programs are doing, how their key performance indicators are doing, we're hoping that they'll not only you know sort of spot those fires a bit earlier, um, but they'll see areas where you know they're really outperforming. They'll recognize strengths they might not have known about, um, or, or maybe only anecdotally, or they'll see areas of weakness where they would come to us and ask for um, some support with putting forward a quality improvement project. So this is this is an experiment that we're beginning now, and I'd be really interested to hear if any of the other states have had uh, a similar experience. If you have a really well-developed performance management system, has that led to new quality improvement projects? This is uh, Dan from Idaho and Isaac. We're we're following that same path. It sounds like the same tracks, uh, doing a lot of quality projects. Um, now we have a uh, um, data person on staff in our bureau. And so we're looking at different aspects of bolstering our performance management system. Same thing. So this is good to hear. Um, I may want to link up with you and <laughs> do some side calls too. Um, but we are looking at different systems. There's, um, I know Montana just gave a presentation, I think it was last week, on their HealthStat system, which is a free system app. Um, we have Vian we just um, contracted with. And so we're looking at those two you know, do they work together? Do they work separately? There's also VSMG by Capital Alliance, and there's a whole bunch more. I know Maricopa County uses VSMG, um, but then also not just the application, but the performance management structure and system, and our strategic plan and state plan and quality improvement plan, all those align and stuff with the FAB and all that, and developing the systems. Our approach in that is going to be uh, not as much the senior level but looking at the approaching it at the performance management at the program level. And we want to study that and look at that and work with our data groups and then drive with data, evidence-based data decision, which sounds like kind of like what you're doing. Is that correct? Uh, that, that is correct. Yeah, it's very similar to the approach that we're taking. Yeah, we think we can have a better bang for the buck. And they need strengthening anyways at the program level of educating what is performance management, how do you drive, do you have your logic models, let's look at those those outcomes and outputs and things like that, and then re-display it in a way that they understand, oh, that's what we're doing, performance management. Yeah, now let's see how we can identify things, and if there's an area that needs improvement because you haven't hit your target, how do you do PDSA or however way the organization wants to do it. Um, so it's a lot of educating, re-educating, and showing maybe in a different way visually, we're going to try that approach. So I'd love to hear other people how they're doing it. Uh, but glad to hear. New York, thank you.
Thank you. Thanks. Uh huh. Denise, this is Joanne in Connecticut. Hi, Joanne. Go ahead. Um, so, at the risk of stealing thunder from from Vermont, um, but we're both using results-based accountability for our performance management system, and um, I, I feel bad talking Heidi because I know she's on the call, but we're doing something. Don't worry, similar. Joanne. I, I got your back. <laughs> similar <laughs> now to what, what they are doing, and that is at each of our um, – biweekly senior management meetings now, each of the division or section chiefs have to present one of their dashboards, which includes both population level indicators and performance program performance measures. And um, we've been doing it for about six months now, and I'll just say that there are a lot of managers who we realized never had looked at the dashboard, didn't know how to navigate it, didn't know what their programs had in there, um, are becoming more familiar with it, and, um, and while it may not necessarily always lead to quality improvement, and I don't think it always has to, it may lead to some changes. And an example would be uh, we had a performance measure about our contracted local health departments using their, all their um, lead poisoning prevention funds, and, and they weren't. And um, so it, it had a discussion at the senior management level about how they distribute that funding. And so I think that um, it's a slow process. And you know, if, if a senior manager is sharing one dashboard at each meeting every two weeks, it's going to be a long time before they get through them all. So now some are starting to do it at their own staff meetings. Um, but I also think we have to work with mid-level managers, because I think that they are the ones where um, this might be falling down in their area. I'm not sure they're believers. This is Gary Faulkner from Kentucky. I think that last point was a very important one. They're also the ones, at least in Kentucky, that are doing two different jobs. They're doing the hands-on day-to-day work, but they're also trying to manage. They're probably the, the most overworked people that we have inside our organization. So this is Heidi in Vermont. Um, I can chime in to what Joanne said, but also that sort of mid middle manager not being bought in or the believers yet. Um, we've had particular success in, in that, I forget who it was who earlier raised the issue about the emergencies, the fires, the things that, you know, we draw our attention away from building infrastructure and performance management systems. And we had one really great success where the fire of opiates um, and deaths from heroin in Vermont, uh, was get, we were getting a lot of data requests. And we were actually say, able to say, hey, look at our scorecard. Look at our dashboard. This is where we're putting the most up-to-date data about population indicators and program performance. And once we were able to do that and allow that format to be used by those mid-level program folks, they realized just how valuable it was to be sending people to this online public resource. And it, it kept sending everyone there. So it really fulfilled a data request need, which is not something we originally intended, but it really helped them tell the story. And it married the performance management infrastructure building with the addressing emergencies, et cetera. Heidi, that's terrific. Um, sort of an unintended consequence, but a, a good one. Was there, Heidi, let me ask a follow-up question to that. Was, was there, uh, do you have a specific measure on opioid misuse? Oh, uh, we've got many. You've got many. Okay, great. But, so, I mean, but I think the, the moral of the story is that when the program manager realized that it could be helpful for them when it, with all of the work that they were doing right. and all of the requests that they were trying to meet, that's when they really bought into performance management. It just happened to be that it was because of data requests, but now they're pretty strongly committed to it. That really helped us sell it and it's cemented into their day-to-day -day work. We have not done that across the board, um, but that, that was a success in that one area. Anyone else on the line have get these data requests where you think you might be able to then put in a plug for your, your performance management system? This is Joanne again. So we, you know, we have every indicator that's in our state health improvement plan in our dashboard. So 
the data is there. So I think our external partners really like it because um, those that are working with us to implement action strategies around our priority areas, the data is there and it's readily, you know, continuously updated. So it's a great data source. I agree with Heidi on that. This is uh, Dan from uh, Idaho again. Sorry if I'm talking too much, so cut me back if you do. Not at all, Dan. Go ahead. <laughs> okay. Um, this is a great topic because, as a matter of fact, one of our quality projects right now is um, to revisit our data request processes, plural. And so we're working on that bureau and division-wide. Um, and data is our big focus for this year. Um, what kind of dashboard do we want as in modifying or a whole different look, the whole performance management system? And we've got our data groups and things of how that is. So this is nice to hear, but it's great also to hear that we're right, right at that point. How do we want to collect data, provide data, user-friendly data, usable, that kind of thing, valid data, <laughs> you know, vet it, and so forth, our processes. So thank you. So Heidi, um, in terms of this, you know, this request for data and then it leading to this one specific area, um, you know, really buying into performance management and looking at the indicators on a regular basis, um, do you foresee Vermont and or you, um, you know, using that in some fashion to, to spread across the agency? Um, a good question. I think yes, but it goes back to meeting the programs where they're at. Um, which is why this work is so time intensive. I mean, I, we, even if it, if it worked really well for one area of our health department, it might not work well for another program. And so we really have sort of met program. I mean, I work a lot intensively with programs on a one by one or one to many basis, um, and try to meet them where they're at. And that's why this change takes a long time. So we can set standards as a department, and leadership can be bought in, but we, I think we've been we've become comfortable with the fact that it's not equal across the department, and that we're we're um, encouraging pockets and sharing success stories, but we're also not penalizing people if they're not in the same place as you know some of our more uh, front of the curve folks. This is Dan. I I concur. I mean, we've come to that understanding that not everybody's going to be at the same level, whether it's buy-in or just ability, the capacity to support and things. And that's okay, I think. Yeah, I mean, I think all the work that we do, um, we, we do have to meet folks where, they're, where they are. Um, can you tap into this person then who is ahead of the curve, um, Heidi, and to help, you know, with spreading, spreading across the, the, uh, the agency, you know, maybe through, the, through a peer group meeting or, or what have you. Yeah, no one wants to trade places with the folks dealing with the heroin data requests. <laughs> so, I mean, yes and no. Right? The, the urgency is just not there for some of the other programs. Right, right. Understood. And we don't want it to be. <laughs> well, no, of course. <laughs> Indeed. This is Dan. Was your question basically um, looking for champions, that kind of thing? Uh, Dan, if, if you were referring to my question, yes, that's yeah. essentially what I was looking for. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'm I'm using that approach too. Is you know who who is willing first is always the low hanging fruit to go to. We've got some great people that you know are willing to step up. I I just don't want to keep using the same. You know what I mean? And have them take on the burden all, every time. So that's that's the challenge, of course. Right. Making it making it grow and hopefully getting them to sell. I can't be the Messiah in my own neighborhood, uh, you know that old saying, and it's better to have someone else tell them, no, no, this is working out, this is good, try it, listen to what he has to say, you know. Yes, it's hard being the voice of one. Um, this is Heidi. I will add one last piece, which is we, we do have our performance management committee, which is sort of our internal um, relatively representative of most parts of the department where I have representatives who share sort of like what's working in their group and what challenges are they having. So in that sense, the learning from the champions and peer-to-peer -peer 
support, um, the Performance Management Committee is our structure for doing that. Heidi, is that, is that, um, do you have a separate committee for performance management, or is it sort of the performance management quality council model? Yeah, same. The, the, the thing, whatever you're calling it, that is required by accreditation. Yes, okay. <laughs> the council. Um, one, one thing that I read is, is really a great resource, um, and I, I'll send this back out to everybody, um, and some of you are probably familiar with it, but it's the um, NATO Roadmap to a Culture of Quality Improvement, and um, it, it, it actually gives you, um, you know, it, it, you, wherever your agency is in that um, spectrum of knowledge of quality improvement, um, it, it, it gives you sort of transition strategies to move into the next phase. So, um, you, you know, phase one is basically no knowledge of QI, um, and then all the way up to it's embedded into the way the agency does business. Um, so I, I think it's a great resource if you haven't looked at it. The concepts, you know, are going to apply to both performance management as well as quality improvement. Does anyone, can anyone speak to that, this, this um, resource? Yeah, this is Dan from Idaho again. Sorry. Um, as a matter of fact, one of our um, quality projects is going to be assessing the QI culture in the, in the division where it's kind of like, you know, let's take a step back and really see where we're at, what we're doing. And I plan on using the NATO roadmap and those tools in there as it fits with us to take a look and, and see where our gaps are and what we need to do. So I, I think it's going to be a great tool to use. Great, thanks, Dan. Anyone else using this tool or parts of it? Out of one? Did you, did you say the NATO roadmap? Yes. This is Susan Thomas from Missouri. We we have used that here in Missouri. We used it about a couple years ago when we first started with our um, QI plan, and we use it to kind of try to assess and evaluate where the department was at that time. And then each year we reevaluate where we think the department is on that roadmap. And um, there's a part of that, I believe it's part of that roadmap that's a, a much longer version that includes a whole bunch of strategies from getting to get from one point of the road, road map to the, and the next point, there's a whole bunch of different strategies. So we kind of use those to help inform some of the activities that we may want to do for the upcoming year in, the, in, the, in our QI plan. And so Susan, has that been, has that, have you seen then a, a transition in from one phase to another? Or are you just beginning this process? Well, I think there's definitely been some progress in certain parts of the department. Um, you know, we've developed online trainings, we've developed uh, in-person training, so we've been able to get more staff just aware of what QI is. Um, so there has been progress. I, I honestly, you know, as far as getting from uh, from to get from where you're having formal QI in parts of the department to formal QI across a whole department takes, a, to me at least, takes a lot of work. And so um, we're still working on getting from, from that point to the next. So This is Megan in Washington. I completely agree with that last statement. So, so while we're on that topic, for fo any, anybody on the phone here, um, have you had experience, success, have you been successful in moving from just these um, sort of um, uh, program or division specific um, QI projects and performance measures into something more um, agency wide? Um, this is Joanna. I, you know, I. I like to think about that doing performance management agency-wide is more important than doing Q quality improvement agency-wide. I, I mm -hmm. don't think everything requires quality improvement. And, and that's not to say there isn't always room for improvement, but 
need quality improvement projects in every aspect of the department, I don't think is necessarily a good measure. I, I think it's a better measure to know if people are managing their performance using data and performance measures and then looking to see where they can improve. Um, to me, that's more meaningful and relevant. Joanne, that's, a, that's an excellent point. This is Megan in Washington, and I, I agree completely with that point. Uh, the, the emphasis on every single thing doesn't need a QI project or a, or a, or a PDCA cycle um, attached to it. Here in Washington, we are fortunate that um, our previous governor, um, already in 2011, uh, said we're, we're going to learn how to do lean, which can be a daily practice mm -hmm. and encourages um, um, line staff to work together with supervisors and managers to learn um, what more about their work and look for sort of daily improvement opportunities. Um, and that doesn't require a project all the time. Um, so we're seeing that spreading across the department as well um, in its body. Um, and but combining that with our monthly performance meetings where we report on our strategic plan um, strategies and, and measures and the reporting that has to be done on a monthly or, or frequent basis to the governor of the state on, on our statewide uh, work and performance measures and then the lean work is, is kind of pulling some of those threads together. And it's still something that is spotty. Hello. This is Dan. Oh, go ahead. Oh, um, hello. This is Sandra in California, and um, we are actually trying to start the same thing. Um, just to give you a little bit of background, um, we have provided the online basic quality improvement training, and we also partnered with um, a university to implement an intermediate quality improvement training and coaching. But we only have six QI team projects at the current time. And so we also implemented this um, strategic map action plan on the performance management side. So we asked um, each of our centers, programs, and offices when we have over 200 programs that they would submit one action plan. And so it makes them, of course, have their goal and do their, um, you know, what their data they're going to be reporting. So we're tracking that, and we're in the process of developing a dashboard to house all that information of, along with the quality improvement project. And then eventually, we'd like the dashboard on the internet as well as the intranet. But um, what I wanted to mention about lean, so our California governor also um, started this White Belt Training Academy and to get quality improvement throughout every state department in California. And so I am partnering with um, healthcare services to team up on taking the T4G training, but and hopefully we'll have some trainers, and that, that way we'll bring it back to the department and, uh, you know, spread it that way. But I agree, the performance management is so much more important than doing, you know, there's no way you can do quality improvement projects throughout the whole organization with that many programs and that many. We have, like, over 4,000 employees. So we're struggling, too. And this is Dan, of course. I, I concur with all that. I mean, in a sense, that's how performance management is the definition of it, is, is to do that whole monitoring and not every area has to have a quality project, that kind right. of thing. But the, but the performance management is the basis of getting that data together. The PDSA, if you're using that, that is a component of it, not all of it. So I think that's great to hear. We do have in our – go ahead. Oh, I was just going to say, but unfortunately we only have, like, we received 26 uh, strategic map action plans, um, mm -hmm. and so and they're kind of low-hanging fruit, a lot of them, and so now um, we have support from the assistant director, and so now she wants to go back and ask the deputy directors uh, for, you know, what they're really reporting on, you know, more of a high level, something um, that's a lot more important 
So that's going to be the next step. Oh, that's great. Yeah. Well, and may, does that maybe need to become part of the messaging then is what you you know you all are talking about is you know th- having these performance measures does not necessarily mean that there's going to have to be a QI project for every single measure that's not hitting its the target. You know, exactly. does that need to be part of the message? I you know, I'm, and that's that's definitely for me what I'm trying to pound in, but also as we're strengthening or bolstering up our performance management system and the whole data aspect. Um, we do have in our plan describing that there's formal quality projects, informal quality projects people can do. So that's not being reported, and that's kind of something of the QI culture <laughs> that we're leading to. Is how do we capture that and measure that? And now I want to implement just uh, Ohio, one of the counties, and I'm sorry which one, but they have a just did it. It was presented at the FIT conference. So I want to implement that too. So if people are just, I just did a, a flow chart on this or something, or a Gantt chart. They can, we can capture that information, and we're going to possibly use our SharePoint site to maybe do that. Yes. Capture every, every single little thing that's being done. Yeah, and that's something we need to bolster and work on. So that, that's me, me, myself, and I. <laughs> so that's yeah, the I we. Mean, we struggle here, at, at not struggle, but at ASTO it's the same thing, is um, trying to incorporate just some of the quality tools with, within their day-to-day routine. So. Mm-hmm. Um, so we're, we're close to the top of the hour. Um, this has really been, a, I think, been a great discussion. Um, so I'm going to need to wrap things up. I wish we did have more time. But I did want to do a quick start, stop, and keep. So for those of you who may not be familiar with this tool, um, what, I'm, what I'm needing to hear from you is what do you want me to start doing on the, this, these type of calls that I'm not currently doing? What would you like me to stop doing that I'm doing that I may be currently doing, and then what do you want me to keep doing? So I'm, I'm open. You know, again, I'm quality improvement. Um, I, I'm, you're not going to hurt my feelings. I'm open to feedback because this this is about you guys. Very quickly, Denise. This is David from Oklahoma. I just have a general request that could probably be taken care of offline. I've heard a lot of people talking about dashboards, and we are trying to find a way to get our data into dashboards that isn't a huge financial expenditure. So I would really like to connect with the states that do have a dashboarding system to find out what software and technology they're using. And uh, that would be a big help, but I know that doesn't meet your, your question just now. David, thank you for that. Um, and that would be uh, what I would recommend, David, is to send out an email. Um, you, you should have the the, okay. the um, email address Got to it. all the folks that are on the call. Um, send out that request um, to them, and, and that way you can connect up with some other states. And if you don't have any luck there, um, you, please let me know. Thank you. Sure. And I just have a thought about that, Denise, because this is a recurring theme among us all, and. It would be nice if somebody captured it. I don't know if that's something ASTO could do, but, you know, it's on the PIM listserv, well, now the PH PIM listserv. It just keeps recycling, and it would be so great to have an inventory um, of who is doing what. Oh, so as the requests come in, um, to track that? Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, no, no, not even just the request. Track what software people are using for dashboards. It's oh, you're such talking... a common request. Oh, okay. I, I, okay. Thank you for clarifying that. Because okay. then you've created a learning community, like Heidi and I talk all the time and learn from one another. Because once you start using the system, there are different nuances, different uses for it, and if we're, you know, people are using similar systems, they can really learn from one another. Would it be worth me just shooting out just a couple of quick questions to the group around, you know, what what is the software, performance management software that you are using? Yes, and especially in relation to dashboards because in, we've... In relation to dashboards, okay. Yes, so that will create dashboards. We're currently moving to using uh, SharePoint, but it doesn't mm-hmm. really have the capability for dashboards, at least not the version we're on. And we're we not. have it. We have it in Washington. We have a dashboard. Are you uh, okay? Well, is this on, Megan? On yeah, this is Megan. Yeah. Are you on 2013 or 2016? Uh, it must be 2013. Yeah, we're on 2010. Um, okay. But I'll try to. Yeah. I'll get Megan. I'll try to get your information. You say a lot of things that I always want to follow up on. So <laughs> I'd like to contact you maybe. And I know we're Absolutely. both on the clock for reaccreditation. Yeah. 
So, yes, we are. Yes. So uh, I'd like it would be great to talk. Okay, I'll, I'll, I'll reach out through the list. Thank you, David. That's great. Yeah, and, and like I said, if you're having any difficulty getting up with one another, please let me know because that's also, you know, again, good feedback for me to know that you're not able to, um, you're not getting responses from folks. There might be just a technical issue where your email didn't go out. So please do follow up with me if you're not getting any response. Um, okay, well, we are out of time. We're a little bit over the hour, so I apologize for that. Um, thank you uh, all for participating. Um, we will have our next call sometime in November, um, and we will be talking about uh, health equity um, as it relates to performance management and, um, and measure, performance measures. So um, thank you so much, and we will be talking with you in November. In the meantime, don't hesitate to reach out to me um, or anyone on the ASTO staff. Thank you, Denise. Great Bye. job. Thank, Thank you. you. Bye, everyone. Bye. Bye.